Hey, what's up everybody? We got the Saturn in here. This is the 2008 Saturn Aurora, 137,000 miles. We picked this up out at the auction for $1,100. She's pretty decent looking little car and inside we've got her all cleaned up and ready to go. We did a full detail on it. If you missed it, you should go back and check it out, man. She was pretty dirty. On today's video, we're gonna try to see if we can't get the engine straightened out. Uh, she's knocking, you guys. It just does it when you first start it and it instantly goes away after about a second or two. And it's, she's fine after that. Now I'm hoping that a set of rod bearings is gonna fix that. We don't know for sure. Um, I don't think the crankshaft's beat up or anything. I think it's okay. But that remains to be seen. So let's just get in there and uh, get it opened up. There's, that's the only way we're gonna know for sure. And if it doesn't work out, we're out like what 40 bucks for some bearings not a big deal so lots of work ahead let's start by getting the car jacked up obviously we'll we'll start by getting all of this out of the way So having the wheel out of the way, we can get a better look. Uh, you can see some of the stuff that's gonna have to come off. Uh, for one is this bracket here. This is actually the motor mount itself. And it kind of runs up over here. And all these bolts, there's a bolt here. Uh, I think this one here, this one here. Those all thread right into the pan. I guess the pan is part of the structure of this whole deal. Uh, even the AC compressor, which is right there, it threads into the pan. So obviously we'll have to take that off. Uh, the pulley, we got to pull it off because there's actually a bolt hidden just right in behind it there. So no, the only way to get that bolt out is that pulley has to come off. So that means we got to pull the belt off and all of that. Uh, as far as the rest of it goes, I've been underneath here looking, uh, the exhaust, we're going to pull the exhaust. It, it runs right under the pan and I don't think there's any way to get the, the, uh, pan off with that in the way. I mean, other than that, it looks pretty straightforward. It doesn't look too bad. If it wasn't for this stuff up, up front here, it'd be actually rather simple. We'll start on top here, getting all of this air duct system out of the way right where the uh the pipe the exhaust pipe and the manifold meet the bolts thread through from the top down and there are heat shields in the way so the only way to access that is to get rid of this so let's do that first pop that little guy out of there all right there we go So yeah, here's that heat shield we're talking about. This has got to come off, uh, probably break half the bolts getting it out, we'll find out. Then uh, we'll unplug the O2 sensor and that will expose our bolts for the exhaust to separate the pipe from the manifold once we get this out of the way. All right, you guys wish me luck. Let's see if we can get one out without breaking it. Uh, oh hell, that was easy. I didn't even put up a fight. Okay, and I got hope. I mean, if she's going to let loose of them old rusty bolts, anybody that's ever pulled a dust shield off knows exactly what I'm talking about. These guys almost always break off. And you can see they're, they're rusty from the heat and everything, just like usual. But they let loose. So we're batting a thousand so far. Let's get the, let's get the O2 sensor unplugged here. I think I'm going to go ahead and pop this cover off of here. You can see where this is kind of up. It's held in up underneath there. So let's go ahead and just... Get it on out of the way here. Get out of there. There we go. This is cool. I don't even think I'm going to have to unscrew the O2 sensor. I can just lift this right over the top of it, right? Fish this out of there. There we go, like that. And there we go. There's our three bolts that we need access to. These three guys right here, one, two, and three. Once those are out, we'll be able to drop that pipe off the bottom of there. Let's see if our luck's gonna hold out on us. These things, these bolts here. Okay, that one broke loose. Let's get this one over here. Ah, they're on there, but they're coming loose. A little shot of WD-40 on there. I think it's a 13, let's see. Yep. One more time, and we will have this off of here. I 
There we go. Man, we are getting through this, y'all. Now this pipe should come off of here like no problem at all. There we go. There we go. That old gasket fell apart on me, but oh well. Okay, she is out of there. Look how much room that opened up. I mean, we got a ton of room up in there to get to all the bolts. There's some of them there running down the side here. Now if we could just clear us up some space up here in the front, we'll be golden. I think I'm gonna go ahead and pull the air box completely out of the way. That way we'll get a little more room in here because I'm gonna go ahead and pull the uh, pull the belt and stuff off so I can get, the, get to that pulley. It's gotta go. There's no way to get to that, that other bolt that's tucked in behind it. So this has another little 10 millimeter bolt back here that holds this, this air cleaner box in. See this guy here. Get that out of the way. I believe the rest of it just kind of clips in. Yeah, up here in the front, it kind of slides in those tabs. I believe you just kind of pop this up and out, and there you go. So you can see how much room that bought us there. I think that'll help us get the belt off. The tensioner's off over here, I do believe. Uh, yeah, up under there. Uh, I was noticing somebody's been in here messing around before because looky here, we're missing a bolt. So somebody's been in here working. That's a motor mount, kind of a stabilizer there. It's kind of weird looking. Look at that. But yeah, the bolt's missing out of it. So, I mean, I guess it could have fell out, but I doubt it. You can see here evidence. It kind of looks like somebody's had a, a socket or, or a wrench or something on there messing around. So there's no telling. You know, they sell that special tool that you could buy that goes up in there. It's a bar that has kind of the, the half inch square end on it. And it's designed to fit up into this tight space because they just, they couldn't have possibly gave us that extra quarter of an inch to get an actual ratchet in there. Right. Uh, just take one of your junky old Duralast ratchets that you got laying around or something like that. Some of your Chinese junk and just turn the end of it off. And, uh, usually you could get it up in there after that. Should be able to pry on it and get that belt off at this point. Yeah. Check it out, man. That works pretty good. Look at that. It actually worked out pretty good. Oh, and hey, look what I just found. Check it out. That's the missing bolt. I don't know if they dropped it when they was working on it or if it fell out and landed there. I, who knows? Hopefully the old impact's going to be able to pull this pulley off. Man, these things are known to be super tight. <laughs> awesome. I'm telling you, man, this car wants to come apart. I've got my three-jaw puller over here on the uh the pulley and this is not the right this is not the right puller at all it's supposed to have like a chrysler style puller i do believe and that would be a lot better suited for this i'm not i'm not i don't have high hopes for this let's just put it that way let's see if we can get it to break loose oh, dang it yeah, this just isn't quite right, and it keeps slipping off, unfortunately, because, man, I had it moving. If I could just get it to do that again, it would be all right, because, I mean, it moved a good eighth of an inch, and then it popped loose, and I just, I can't hardly get it positioned right after that. I don't know what the deal is. We'll keep messing with it, though. Finally, man, I had to fight with this thing and fight with it. In fact, I'm still kind of fighting with it. But what I had to do is I had to get in there to actually turn the motor by hand and get this pulley positioned just right. This would be so much easier if I had the right puller, but I'm not running all the way into town to try to rent one, so forget that. <laughs> it was a fight, but we got it. Yeah, what a nightmare. Okay, well, you know, if we had the right tool, that wouldn't have been a chore at all, but... Because we didn't have the right tool, I spent a good uh, 20 minutes fighting that. Uh, this is the bracket that we're after we showed you earlier. And there's the little bolt that hides behind that pulley. The whole reason we got to pull the pulley off to begin with is because of this little guy. Uh, I would have killed him to put that a little bit lower, I guess. I don't really know. <laughs> At this point, I'm going to go ahead and support the engine with my jack and a block of wood. Just a floor jack. We'll put ourselves a little block of wood in between the pan and the jack just for just to kind of help protect it a little bit you know we don't want metal to metal contact 
now that we're supported from underneath, I've got me a bar. This is a solid steel bar. I'm going to run it all the way across there. Uh, it's going on to the radiator support, which is under there. And then over here to the strut tower and everything. So we're solid. Uh, you remember the bolt that was missing in that little strut? Uh, well, I went ahead and used it. Look at that. We put a big fat washer on it. Threaded into the hole. So good, good news. It's not stripped or anything. I guess they just forgot to put it in there. I don't know. So anyway, we'll drape this over this. And we will lock that into place with another nut and bolt, which I have over here. And then uh, we could pull the uh, mount out and the engine will actually just hang right here and it should be fine. With the engine still supported by the jack, I'm gonna go ahead and undo this mount now. We've got to come in and pull all this out. We'll, we'll get the uh, spindle and everything unhooked from the uh, strut here and get all of this off, brake caliper, everything, and then we'll get the CV axle pulled out of there. Now I'm just breaking the, uh, the brake caliper itself. That way we can pull it to the side and hang it up. You guys know the deal. Should just come right off of here now. Try to keep the stress off of this brake line. I got me a little bungee cord over here. Something like that. Go ahead and get this guy out of the way. Man, it's heavy. I think before I break that loose from the uh, strut, I'm going to go ahead and break loose the uh, CV axle here. It's a big old socket, I'll tell you what. There we go. I'm gonna give this guy a few light taps with the hammer. Uh, I'm gonna hit it with a block of wood. I don't I don't really wanna, I know I've seen people do that. I don't like it though, so I'm just not going to. I'm gonna throw a block of wood in there and see if we could do it with that. Oh yeah, <laughs> that, that popped out instantly. That's awesome. So with the CV axle popped loose, we could go ahead, pop these two loose. That's gonna separate the spindle from the uh, strut there and then we could pull the CV axle out and move forward from there. And again, I'm gonna try the block of wood method, kind of protect the studs. These tend to be in there sometimes. I was hoping we'd have enough room to pull this CV axle out without pulling the uh, control arm, but I don't know. I can't, I don't remember. Let's see. Let's see. We might get close, but I don't know if we'll get all the way. Oh, there we go. Awesome. Okay, good deal. So in order to get the CV axle out on the uh, passenger side, since it's longer, it has this, uh, I think they call it, what is that? Like an intermediate shaft or something like that. So it's got this bracket here that holds it. And it's got these bolts that you gotta try to get to and you can't even see them. Let's see. There's three of them. I got two out already. Let's see if we can get this last one out. Went ahead and put a drain pan underneath here before we pop this axle out, just in case anything wants to drip out of the side. They, they're known for doing that. There we go. That one came out pretty easy. I just had to pull on it. I didn't even have to pry. There's our transmission fluid. I'm gonna catch some of that. Let's get an eye on it. I got a uh, a clean little bucket here. We'll catch some of that and see what it looks like. It really doesn't look that bad as it's draining out. It kind of looks clean, to be honest. Let's see if we can get this guy drug out of here. Yeah, that's what we're after right there. This is our last bolt right here. It's actually tucked in kind of under the power steering there. Go ahead and get that guy broke loose right now. So I've got the engine supported by the jack and uh, we got that last bolt out. Let's see if we can wiggle this mount out of here. See if we can raise this engine up just a bit. 
what we're trying to do is gain clearance right there. Get that, that bracket kind of wedged out from behind that power steering pump. There we go, just like that. And I think I can wiggle this off of here now. Okay, yeah, that's what we're looking for right there. We needed this guy out of the way so that we could get to the rest of these bolts behind here. Okay, so with the mount out of the way, we could go ahead and lower our jack and let the engine hang from our little our little thing we rigged up up top. I think I'm gonna go ahead and take this rubber mount out of the way. I mean, why not? Just kind of get this guy right out of the way there. So you got a couple of bolts running across here. Uh, those are gonna have to come out. And then I think over here as well, right here, that's the air conditioner uh, uh, compressor. That little bracket attaches. I think if we just pull the bolt out, we'll be okay. Uh, let's find out. I got all the bolts out of the front here and they're all the same size. Every one of them are the same, so I don't have to mark them or anything like that. That's cool. Let's go ahead and drain the oil out of this thing before we go popping that pan off, right? That makes sense. Let's catch some of it. Looks pretty dirty. Across the back of the pan, we got three bolts here. They are 15 millimeter. Those hook to the transmission. We'll get those out. Shouldn't take but a second here. And then the rest of them are facing, you know, going up that way. Those are 13 millimeters. We'll get to those here in just a second. So now we'll get to those 13 millimeters that are facing upward there. So we're down to the last one on this side. So there were a total of five on the other side. Uh, it looks like there's gonna be six on this side. Uh, we'll get those out and uh, I think that's it. I don't know, I, I was noticing these two little guys here, one on each side over here. I mean, they look like they come off with the pan. I don't know what those are for exactly. But it might have something to do with the rear seal. I don't know, we'll find out here in just a minute. Let's go ahead and get these other six bolts out. Just so you know, all the bolts that were running straight up and down in that pan that went down both sides, they were all the same size, so we don't have to mark those. And then, of course, there were the three 15 millimeter bolts that ran across the back over there. Those were all three the same size as well. Okay, so I've gone through here. I've double checked, triple checked. I don't think there's a single bolt in there anywhere that we might have missed or forgotten. I think we could start getting this thing off of here. Uh, I suspect it's going to be stuck on there pretty good and we might have to kind of tap it off with maybe a dead blow hammer or something, maybe a block of wood, I don't know. We'll figure it out. So I found this little notch right here and I kind of got me a little bent pry bar type thing. I'm like, I got the crescent wrench. I'm kind of putting it on here. Because man, this is kind of hard. But this is actually working. If you look, it's separating. I want to go real slow and easy. I don't want to do too much on one side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go around to the other side, do the same thing. But you can see it's actually starting to come loose right here. So I'm just kind of working at it little by little here. You can see it's starting to come down off of there. I think I'll go over to the other side and do a little bit too. So I was wondering about these earlier and yes, apparently they do need to come out. Big old, good lord, these things are a mile long. Now, I do believe at this point, she's going to come the rest of the way down off of here. There we go. All right, here we go. Whoa. Whoa, here she comes. Oh, you know what? We're hanging up right here, right on the edge. Look at that. Look what they did to us, y'all. Barely caught the edge of this AC compressor. Remember, we was wondering if that's going to need to come off of there and kind of looks like it is yeah i don't see it coming any lower than that without pulling that loose okay well it looks like we got a bolt going to come out here and then i think two more on the front so i've got the uh ac compressor already unbolted up front 
Now we're down to just this last bolt over here on the side. And as soon as I cracked it loose, the oil pan started to kind of fall there a little bit. Oh, good Lord mercy. So with the bolts being out at the front of the compressor and then with the pressure relieved off of this bolt here, after loosening it off, I sh all that's all it took. And then we could kind of push that compressor forward just barely. I mean, literally like eight, an eighth of an inch is all it takes and this pan will fall right out of here. There we go, whoa, that didn't take much. Well, there you have it, it's finally off. It really wasn't that bad. Um, yeah, these definitely, we remember we were asking, I wonder if these have to come out. They must definitely have to come out. You're not getting the pan off without without that coming off. I went ahead and kind of cracked them loose and spun them about halfway out. And then once the pan dropped, it would stop there, wouldn't go any further. So it's kind of obvious, okay, well, we gotta go ahead and take those all the way out. Another thing is, uh, at first I thought I might've wasted my time pulling that CV axle out. But uh, once I got in there and started trying to fight that pan out of there, it was kind of nice not having it in the way. So, you know, I guess that kind of depends on your project and how easy or hard it may be coming apart. If you end up having a tough time getting your pan off, you might want the extra room and go ahead and pull that CV axle out of there. It really wasn't that hard anyway. Just a few extra minutes, I think. Let's pop this one off and see what it looks like. go so this bearing's got some pitting in it, it kind of feels kind of it's not real smooth like it should be you know Let's see if we can't tap that one up just a hair now what we really want to look at on here is what does the uh, journal look like and man it looks fine there's nothing crazy going on it feels nice and smooth so we we're good on that one so our new bearings here Got these off of Rock Auto. Like I said, around 40 bucks. Not too big of a deal. Let's get these opened up. Get this bearing seated down into this cap just right. You want it to be even on both sides. You don't want to rub right here and feel the edge of that bearing sticking up on either side. So make sure it's, it's even on both sides. So obviously up in here is going to be a little more difficult. But same thing, you know, just get it all clean out best you can get it ready for that new bearing here's our new bearing about to go in so now I've got the uh, bearing on the rod now um, I could push it up in there just a little bit get it out of the way and then I can spin my crankshaft back around till it lines up there we go just like that we could run a little bit of assembly lube oil anything whatever you got definitely don't want to put none of this stuff together dry uh you might notice i didn't mark anything when i took this off that's because this already has a line it has like a raised line here and if you'll notice it's got that on all of them and they're all facing this side of the motor so there's really just no way to get that wrong so i think we'll be okay on that let's get this up here get it started i believe these torque down to 38 foot pounds I need to go back and verify that before I start torquing on it but I think that's what they said it was so anyway uh, what we'll do is is we'll just kind of snug it up for now and then I'll go through and torque all of these at the end while we continue to kind of turn it up turn it around and around make sure we're not getting anything binding up get this next cap off of here and we'll just keep repeating this process when I find a bad bearing I'm gonna show it to you guys because one of these is a knocker and I don't think it was that last one that last one actually looked decent clean this off yeah you can see I mean they've got some pitting to them but they're not wore down you know excessively I don't see any kind of major grooves or anything so I don't think this is our knocker either so this is the very next journal. Uh, <laughs> this one's pretty rough. Man, I don't even know if there even is a bearing here. I mean, it's that thin. Ooh, that's got me worried, y'all. That. Let's get underneath there and look at that crankshaft journal. Yeah, check it out, look at that. 
there's part of the bearing hanging out from there. So we, we've got a spun bearing. That's definitely going to be our knocker. I, I'm trying to fill the, the journal here. I mean, from what I could tell, it feels okay. I do see some slight pitting, but I don't see anything that wouldn't come off of maybe an emery cloth or something. Yeah, you can see there's the bearing still stuck on the still stuck on the uh, crankshaft there. It's not a good sign. There we go. There's the piston off of there. Oh, that's not gonna lie. That has me a little worried. I'm gonna be as careful as I can. See if we can't just tap that right off of there. Oh no. Come on now, don't be welded on there. Tap around here from this side maybe. Oh man, that's kind of on there and I don't wanna, try not to pry against the the journal but god I don't know what else to do really it's, I mean, it's on there yeah what we got here is we got a bearing on top of a bearing that's what's happening here the other half of our bearing is literally under this one you see where we bent this one back already see what I'm talking about we've got a bearing here and then we got the other bearing still stuck on the journal there awesome kind of teeter tottering in there now so it's about to come out there it went. Whoa, about hit me in the face. Okay, well that's the first layer. Now we gotta get the second layer out of there. There we go. Now I'm under it. Once I get under it, I pretty well got her whooped. There it went. It's gonna be a miracle if this works out, y'all. So yeah, apparently there was no bearing on the uh, rod cap at all, and it was just all stuck to the uh, the uh, rod journal <laughs> on the crankshaft. This is what they look like now. I mean, they are in really, really bad shape. It's a miracle that the crankshaft itself isn't worse off because it does feel a little bit rough, but you see how this looks? Look at that. Oh my God, dude. The crankshaft itself feels fine. It's got a little bit of roughness to it, but I'm gonna show you guys how to fix that. So what I've got here is some various grits of sandpaper that I have trimmed down to fit into the crankshaft journal. Uh, we're gonna start off with 180, we'll work up to uh, 240, and then we'll finish off with 320. Uh, we're gonna use this simple shoestring. This is kind of an old school method, but it works. I've used it before. Uh, it doesn't feel bad it just has a little bit of a, a rough spot and i think that's just old bearing material and that's exactly what this trick is for is to clean off that old material i hope that you guys can see this okay you can see what i've done here i've wrapped my sandpaper around the crankshaft journal right and then i've wrapped my shoestring around it as well i've done one full loop around this uh, journal with the uh, shoestring, and that will take you a few minutes of fighting, trust me. Uh, I do apologize for the lighting, but um, <laughs> all my batteries went dead, so I'm just left with this one for now while the batteries charge back up. And I just wanted to show you guys right quick, a quick little demonstration of what you could do to clean up these journals. Uh, now, like I said, we've got our sandpaper wrapped around that. Now all we gotta do is just sit here and just do this little number here. Back and forth, back and forth. And it won't take much to work that old bearing material off of that, off of that journal. Let's see if we can see what we're working with here. This is where, I mean, like half the bearing is on the journal still. And it is starting to work its way off of there. You guys see that? It's starting to work its way off of there. Now keep in mind, there's no damage to the crank. The crank is fine. It's just got that material, that old bearing material stuck to it. And we got to get that off of there and it won't just peel off. You want to be real careful. We're not putting a lot of pressure on it or anything like that. We're just going back and forth. Each time you do this, that sandpaper is going all the way around that journal. See what I'm saying? 
You could use WD-40 as lubrication, kind of like you're wet sanding the journal. That's fine. And you want to kind of stop and check it every now and then as well. And I'm just kind of feeling it with my fingers, obviously. It's turning out really smooth, you guys. I think we're going to be able to save this. I want to show you guys kind of the process of getting this all set up with the shoestring and the sandpaper and all that. It's a bit of a process, but it does work. So once you've got your sandpaper looped all the way around the journal, like so, you're going to want to hold it on there. Take your other hand, take your shoestring, loop it up over, kind of grab, grab it, bring it on around here. I'm still holding pressure on my paper because I don't want my paper to come loose you know and kind of the whole the whole thing here is just kind of hold pressure on it as you're looping the shoestring around and like I said it's a little bit of a pain but you'll get it and you can see we're getting that all wrapped around there a full circle that's what we want okay and there we go there we go we're on there and what I did before I actually put that on there I sprayed my sandpaper down with some WD-40 and now we are back in business check it out man it's not too bad you know once you get the hang of it it's kind of a pain at first trying to get the sandpaper and the shoestring everything all positioned it's a little bit aggravating to be honest with you but once you've done it a few times it's not hard at all get us a little assembly lube on this bearing here we can move on to the next one. All right, we'll get this one snugged up here. Remember, we're not going to torque any of this till, till it's all done. Okay, so we're going to move on to the next one. Hopefully, it won't be as bad as that last one. We'll find out here in a minute. Let's pop this off here, see what we got. And another spun bearing. Good grief. Yeah, it's like right here in the middle of the motor caught the worst of it, I guess. Probably the same story as the last one. Bearing stuck on top of a bearing. <laughs> yeah, it looks like more of the same. Same thing that happened on the last one. We got the bearing stuck to the uh, the crank journal there. So let's get it off of there with a the screwdriver and a hammer, just like last time. There's one. Well, I've got this one just hanging by a thread. It's about to fall out of there. So good news, these aren't as bad and they weren't stuck on there like the other ones and there's there was no leftover bearing material. So I will barely kind of skim over this with the shoestring and the sanding method. I won't have to quite go as aggressive on the grit you know we could probably just run over some 320 and call it good or just even just a little emery cloth or something uh that's all this next one's going to need it didn't have the bearing material on it so that is some good news on that one this one will go a lot smoother and a lot quicker so we're down to the last two we got the first four in we started at the back of the motor working our way forward uh if i find any more bad ones i'll let you guys know got some good news the next set of bearings are just fine i mean they got some got a little wear to them but nothing crazy they're not welded to the damn crankshaft or anything silly like that going on just normal so we'll get those swapped out just as well and uh i just wanted to report that and let you guys know that we're, we're not out of the woods yet but at least it did get better we didn't have any more of those bad ones well we made it down to the very last one hopefully this one will be as in good a shape as the the one before it was, because it wasn't bad at all. Let's see. Wipe this off, see if you can see it. I mean, that looks okay. Just like the others, you know, just had a little bit of pitting. Not much scoring, really. So, all right, cool. That means our uh, crankshaft journal ought to be okay, you would think. Just like the last one. I mean, it was nice and smooth and shiny. Didn't have any anything wrong with it at all this one looks like it's the same so we're doing good y'all i think we might be okay we'll see so now that all the rods are in i thought maybe we'd get in and clean up this pan and get everything ready to start putting back together let's get the windage tray out of the way also we got the pickup tube in here i've already loosened off all the bolts here take the pickup tube out of the way and you can see man i mean it's 
pretty dirty in there. There's lots of metal shavings. So I don't know, man. We may be wasting our time with all of this because all of that has been sucked through the motor. And as most of you guys know, uh, you, you clog up those VVT solenoids and you're, you're in for a world of hurt. And I guarantee you all that crap right there has been sucked up into those things. So we may have to end up replacing them or something. We're gonna give it our best shot, see if we can get the old girl running and see if we can get any miles out of it. I mean, we definitely are not gonna let any of this stop us. We'll keep moving on and see what happens. Yeah, with it being ran low on oil like that enough to uh, tear up those bearings, I mean, who knows what it's done to those chains. You guys know that these 3.6s are all about those, those long timing chains and they get to stretching out over time and they will wear out prematurely if you don't keep the oil changed. And well, hell, imagine what happens when you don't have enough oil in it. What do you think, a lot better than before? I'm just gonna take the uh, compressed air, blow it all out, get it nice and dry, and then we're gonna have to run some gasket sealer on here because these don't have gaskets. Yeah, there was no gasket in there, it was just all sealer. That's kind of strange. I was wondering why when I went to AutoZone to order a pan gasket for it, they said that it's not available. I was like, what? So we're gonna start torquing the rod caps and uh, the way they recommend doing this is you want to go over them, start in the middle of the motor, work your way out, 18 foot-pounds at first, and then go 110 degrees after that. So let's get our 18 first. Okay. It's not much. 18 foot-pounds is not much. Once you got your 18 foot pounds, you'll want to mark it and then you'll want to spin it 110 degrees past that. Some torque wrenches will do that for you. Mine doesn't have that setting. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mark it and you could do this with a, with a magic marker as well. I'm just going to mark right here just so I don't lose track of it. Okay. And then obviously if I spun this, Till the dot was over here on the opposite side, meaning half a turn, we'd have 180 degrees, right? And that'd be a little too far. So we're gonna go sh just shy of that. Got my gasket sealer here. I'm using the uh, Permatex Ultra Gray gasket maker, and it's kind of made for this kind of stuff here where it's you know made of aluminum and, and high vibration, things like that. I figure since the oil pan is actually part of the structure here, I mean, hell, there's so much stuff bolts to this thing, motor mounts and everything. So I figured, you know, vibration, what have you, this would be the, the right stuff for the job, right? We want to be kind of liberal with this stuff because there's no gasket. That's strange, no gasket at all. So we're going to run us a nice bead of this stuff through here. We want to get it right in the center of that. See how it's got this little channel here? I want to fill all that up. Get us a nice good amount on there because I want that stuff to kind of squish out. Well, here comes the moment of truth. Let's see if we can get this up in there without messing up all of our sealer. So far, so good. Need to get it on the dowels. Is the first thing. It's a tight fit up in here because you, you got to squeeze it in between the front and the back of the engine. It just kind of wedges itself up, up in here. Going to get us a bolt started here. We're right up there to the dowels at this point. Uh, I don't want to use the bolts to suck it up onto the dowels, though. I don't recommend that. But I do want to get a bolt started here. We'll kind of tap around on it until it slips up on the dowel pin. There's one here, and then there'll be one up at the front of the motor. But we are lined up really well. Well, I'm happy to report that we are moving right along now. We could pull our bar out. We've already got the pan on. We've got the motor mount reinstalled. Let's get this chain off of here, and we can move right on. Well, this is pretty sketchy. Check this out. Somewhere along the line, our chain snapped. Good Lord, we're lucky to be alive at this point. I think I'll upgrade to a bigger chain next time. <laughs> that's that's sketchy, man. I had no idea this whole time I've been underneath there working. Which, you know, if it would have actually snapped, the engine would have fell a little bit. It wouldn't have like fell out on the ground or anything, but still, that's kind of dangerous. 
Yeah, man, check it out. That, that thing was snapped clean in half. That's crazy. My bird's... Why didn't you warn me of this? So maybe that's what the red bird's been trying to warn me about. <laughs> Anybody that might have missed it, that bird is always at that window every time I'm out here, and she'll just sit and do that the whole time I'm here. I don't... She's trying to get a sneak peek of the video. I don't know what's going on with her. I've tried everything. I've covered the window up with paper, everything, and it didn't. Nothing did any good. She's still there every day, no matter what. So I figured, hell, if you want to see in here, see what's going on, I'll take the paper down for you. And that's what she does. She sits out there and watches me work. That's cool. I don't mind. You can see there we got the motor mount in place. We can lower this engine down, tighten that up. Just like that. I think before I put my exhaust back on, I'm going to go ahead and replace my oil filter because it looks like it's going to be so much easier to get to this way. That oil filter resides right there. So let's just go ahead and take it off, put our new one on, and then we'll put the pipe up in there. All right, it was a bit of a struggle, but I finally did get it off. I had to break out the old pliers, <laughs> get a little number on it, but she's off of there. We got our brand new one going in now, so let's get that on there. But you can kind of see you up under here without that in the way. Got tons of room, look at that. Except pipe runs right through here. It would have been right in the way. And I needed both hands, a pair of pliers, you name it, to get this thing, the old one off. All right, we got six quarts of the good stuff going in. The manufacturer suggests 5W30, and that's exactly what we got going in. And they also suggest a full synthetic. A lot of guys miss that on these and they wonder why they wear out prematurely. Apparently, from what I understand, the research I've done is 3.6s are very meticulous when it comes to maintenance. From what I understand, if you'll do that and then change the oil at uh, regular intervals, like 3,000 miles, like they say, even though technically you can get 5,000 out of the synthetic oil, they say still change it every 3,000. Supposedly, if you'll do that, these things will run a really long time and uh, they're really peppy motors, to be honest. But it may be too late for this one. We don't know. We'll find out in a minute. So I got the battery on the charger. Here we go, man. Moment of truth. Let's see if we got enough juice to get it to fire up. There she is. She's running. I don't hear any knock. I don't hear a knock, you guys. Remember when it first started fired up before, it would just knock for about two or three seconds, and then that was it. I don't hear a knock this time. It's actually running rather well. Especially considering that the battery is about half dead. Okay, so we're gonna let it run for a few minutes, let it warm up, all that good stuff. Check the oil, check it for leaks. You, know, you guys know the drill. I'm not seeing any drips, no leaks or anything like that. And I don't hear any funny noises, that's the best part. So yeah, like I said, I'm gonna let it warm up to operating temperature and then I'll, I'll kind of rev on it, get the RPMs up a little higher and uh, see if she holds together. So you can see there, we're getting up to operating temperature. We're about halfway there now. Thought maybe we'd give her a little throttle and see what happens. You guys cross your fingers. Hopefully we won't hear any knocking. No knock. That's all I'm gonna do for now. Uh, we'll do the rest when we actually get it out on the road and get to drive it. Let's do another test fire. All right, man, she's firing up nice. That battery's about half dead. That's the old battery out of that old GMC. The battery that came in this was completely gone. I mean, it's no good at all. I've got it right here. It won't even take a charge. So what do you guys think, man? Is it too early to claim victory? We'll know more when we actually get it out on the road and drive it, but we can't do that just yet. You guys remember, we got transmission issues to deal with as well on this one. But hey, one thing down, we could cross it off our list. Of course, with it not knocking, it's worth more money now. Maybe we can actually get what we have into it out of it, which is just over 1100 at this point. I don't think it'll be that hard. I mean, we could sell it as is and get that back and then some. But that's boring. We want to continue on providing some good content for you guys. I think this video series has been a lot of fun so far. We've already got her all detailed up on the inside. And now we got an engine that doesn't knock. 
And like I said, next we'll get on the old transmission. Uh, hopefully it shifts solenoids. We've been through all that before and we turned out okay. So fingers crossed, that's all it is. So be on the lookout for the next video on this one. We'll tackle that issue as well. Hopefully we can claim victory on that. That'd be sweet. If you guys enjoy the video, please like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. I appreciate everybody watching. Uh, don't forget my Instagram, link in the description. Facebook, check me out on Facebook, Weird Beard on Facebook. Send me a friend request. I've explained this before on other videos. Basically, YouTube doesn't always send out notifications. And if you have me on Facebook or Instagram, either one, you'll get a notification from me. That way, you'll never miss a video. Hey, you guys, it's been a lot of fun. We've been out here messing around for a couple days on this one. Now, I would say that probably took all of about 10 hours. I split that up into two days, got it done, got it done over the weekend. Not too bad, not too bad at all. And it only cost us like $40 for some bearings, uh, shoot another 40 bucks for some oil and a filter. And here we are, man, an engine that doesn't knock. And it actually runs pretty decent. I didn't hear any misfires or anything, so that's good. They do tend to run a little better on a charged battery, I'll tell you that much. I couldn't get this thing to run worth of crap on that battery that was in it when it got here. That battery is toast. So anyway, you guys, I'll see y'all next time.